Continuing with that uh, Water Day theme, Alicia, uh, we have uh, Phil <coughs> Mashoko, Director of Water and Sanitation uh, for Cape Town, and Lawrence Mashana, who's Chairman of the South African Human Rights Commission, joining us to unpack the plans to improve water accessibility. I think we've just heard about the big picture problem, but there are some very practical issues. Lawrence, let's start with you. I remember talking to you in your previous incarnation as uh, Public Protector, yes. and now you're protecting human rights. You're the Chairman of the, of the Human Rights Commission. And it, I suppose it raises the question to start with, uh, water, you can't think of any other actual uh, um, uh, commodity or thing which is a right beyond water. It's the most basic thing for our survival. Uh, how would you sum up from a human rights point of view, firstly, access to water, and how are we doing? Well, well thank you for having me. Uh, it is interesting to listen to what the last speaker has been saying around water. <coughs> from our perspective as a Human Rights Commission, uh, water is still a problem in the country. We, we have conducted some hearings across the nine provinces uh, in terms of water and sanitation. And as you know, we have had cases where we have made the rulings against government for building toilets without uh, them having been enclosed and uh, the, the lack of water in some areas. And uh, our finding is that uh, a number of uh, people, particularly in the rural areas, in the former Bantu stands, uh, are, are still without water, mm. are still without uh, sanitation. And the question is, how do we work mm. towards uh, well, having I, water? Well, I'm going to come back to you to, to <coughs> look at that question and what is realistic. I mean, one yes. could talk about uh, the so-called social rights, the actual rights that people have to property and food and drink and shelter and so on. Uh, Phil Mashoko is Director of Water and Sanitation in the City of Cape Town. Phil, uh, we've heard some horror stories and there's a story in the Business Day this morning uh, by Sue Blaine talking about uh, the amount of money spent that we lose because of leaky taps and, and money, uh, water that's just wasted. Where would you say Cape Town is, firstly, in terms of uh, infrastructure, maintenance and access? Uh, well, I think Cape Town is doing uh, um, well in terms of um, reducing the non-revenue water or water losses. Um, we have a 10-year program that is uh, giving us results now. Uh, and uh, we also have a program that is uh, seeks to deal with the issues of maintenance. And the whole creation of um, new infrastructure is well managed uh, from an investment point of view. So we are very sensitive to the issues of water losses and um, we, we, the, the, the council is uh, having a, a, a very supportive attitude towards the uh, reduction of water losses. Well, uh, coming back to Lawrence, and I want to come back to you in a moment, uh, Paul, there with uh, the, the population growth in the Western Cape, as in Johannesburg, as in Durban, mm -hmm. the number of people coming into an area which, uh, and they need water, <coughs> you've got to get water. Yes. So is it realistic to expect everyone to get water? And I'm just thinking of when they uh, rolled out waterborne toilets as opposed to the yes. old long drops. Yes. An unintended consequence was that they hadn't planned for the water infrastructure to support that. And actually it ended up diverting resources perhaps which would have been better spent on water provision rather than toilet provision. Well, well, uh, Choices have to be made is what I'm saying. Well, uh, water, according to us as a human rights uh, uh, commission, water is part of the socio-economic rights and that is a priority. It's, it's, it's a priority number one because the consequences that flows from lack of water are vast. But but surely you you want drinking water firstly. Yes, we, we we do need drinking water, but we also need our facilities like toilets to mm. have water. Phil, uh, looking at Cape Town, I mean you've got a huge population <clears throat> influx there. So however well you've been managing the population, I suspect you can't keep up. What are the principles that are guiding you here? Because as Lauren says, there are human rights here, but they're very practical problems and they're cost problems. And also there's a limited amount of water. You've got to be careful. Well, yes, uh, I, I think um, our approach is, is based on the um, principles of equity. We try as much as we can uh, to make sure that everyone in, in, in Cape Town has got water. So we, we are very much aggressive in terms of uh, proactive planning, in terms of resources itself, making available resources, 
uh, and also in making sure that the infrastructure integrity and stability is sound. Uh, we are also trying as much as we can to e e e have a, a dedicated program for our informal settlements because that's where our, our challenges are. Uh, it's a dynamic demand that, that comes on a daily basis. So we, we, we're trying as much as we can, working with the housing uh, or human settlements department uh, to deal with that aspect because we believe that uh, uh, when people are provided with the houses, they've got a sustainable provision of water. So we, we have all those programs and we also have um, a, a very uh, elaborate uh, indigenous uh, uh, police program uh, that uh, provides uh, for uh, 10.5 kiloliters of water per month uh, for uh, indigent uh, households and uh, free basic uh, water for all residents of Cape Town. So Phil, yes, Phil, just uh, we, have, we to have a challenge. Yeah, you, you certainly do. Mm -hmm. And all these big urban areas do. But Lawrence, now you, you, you receive complaints about access to water. Do you find that government listens? I mean, I'm sure government would like to give everyone water, but sometimes it's impractical. So do, you, do, do your rulings have an effect? Well, our rulings do have effect. For instance, uh, when we ruled against the Cape Town municipality on the enclosure of toilet, they quickly went and closed the toilet, which <clears throat> is something that we really appreciate. We made the same ruling in, in respect of the Free State <coughs> municipality, I think, Makaga. Uh, we are still following up uh, the program there. They have not completed, but they are on course. Yeah. But. Uh, I want to continue and say, look, we <coughs> really appreciate what government is doing in terms of providing water, but for that, those things that, and those areas where this is still outstanding, we really would want to reach a situation where government gives us a program of action going forward to say to us, this is what we plan to do, for instance, when it comes to uh, uh, toilet uh, yes. baskets, the toilets and what have you. We want to know exactly when when is the cutoff. Well, well we that's the point, it. isn't it? Yes. The point is not what they're going to do; it's when they're going to do it by, and, and that's what we you're need the a watchdog standing, for. Yeah, yeah, need a plan. Pro, yeah, a plan with with a, with milestones. Y yes. We'll have to pause there, but we will be talking about this subject through the day on uh, CNBC Africa. That was uh, Phil Mashoka, Director of Water and Sanitation at the City of Cape Town, and Lawrence Mashana, who is Chairman of the South African Human Rights Commission.